Hello and welcome to Building a Business Podcast. This is a show where we embark on an adventure with entrepreneurs across various industries, picking their brains and hearts on what it's like starting, building, maintaining and growing a small business. Building a Business Podcast is brought to you by Virtual Palace Marketing, rehumanizing your marketing experience. My name is Sean. This week, we are back with the people of Scobie Boo, Nicholas, Jen Yang and Wan Ching. Hello, Hi. everybody. Hello, hello. Hi, guys. Hello, Hi, Sean. <laughs> Glad to be back. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you so much for joining this time around. Um, so the last time we were with uh, with you guys, we did a lot of introduction of uh, you know what you do and uh, what is how the origin came about and what are your roles, what are your distribution uh, channels and everything, and what are your milestones for the company, where you want to go in the next um, one, two, three years, and your initial struggles starting up which um, you said that comes a lot with communicating between partners where text is a very bad medium and mm-hmm. you know, we found a way to work across it. And let's move on to, there was a question that uh, I did not ask on our last meeting, which was your company's branding efforts and competitive advantage in the market. Um, let's start there. So from the very get-go, I understand that throughout uh, the evolution of your company eventually you will this branding effort and competitive advantage in the market will tend to transform but mm. what was it how did you see yourself uh, against all your competitors and in your market and in your industry when you set off in this company um <laughs> so um what, what we found out that um, initially when we tried uh, the kombucha, right? So what we found out that a lot of the kombucha drinks are actually generally taste like, uh, they generally taste like fizzy sodas. So um, how, how we want to position ourselves differently is um, we also realized that the fizzy soda comes from probably adding artificial uh, soda, soda to make it fizzy. Water. So mm. what we want to do is to re- remove that step and then do everything based on infusing flavors only. So everything is natural. So you might not get the commercialized um, kombucha kind of texture, but you do get an authentic kombucha. And that's how we want to position ourselves away from uh, the commercial brands. Uh. So generate okay. authenticity, uh, what we want to do. Okay, so... Um, well. I didn't really understand this um, mm. artificial soda and I thought soda is soda. Uh, no, um, so in, in, instead of like, you know, artificially creating fizz, which uh, we we concluded that most, a lot of brands out there do actually artificially add um, soda into their kombucha after it's done brewing. We want to keep that okay. method away from uh, our own kombucha and only use natural ingredients to infuse the flavors instead of adding juices and all. Uh, mm. Mm, okay, okay. Mm. Okay, so all your uh, ingredients are naturally sourced, lah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. So they, they might not taste like um, they might not taste. Uh, you you would taste a lot of the tea, and the 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 flavor itself comes as like a second and third kind of uh flavor. Mm-hmm. Does it make sense? Like um, the first thing you taste is definitely the tea. Then those mm-hmm. other flavors come like an aftertaste. Like a like a complimentary taste where instead of it tasting very revolting to some people, it's <laughs> nice after yeah, this kind of yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah, it's like good wine, you know, like oh, good wine. <laughs> yeah. Every, every, everyone will have a different different taste palette. So, um, you know, the same kombucha that we give it to different people, they will they will give us a different feedback on how does it mm. taste like. You know, so um, example like today, I just um give away um just so sell two bottles of kombucha to to my friend and. Mm-hmm. They say, um, oh, yours one is not so nice comparing to other brands. I was like, huh, why? <laughs> and they tell Aww. me, um, yours one, yeah. And they tell me, um, yours one is still, how to say, um, too, it's not as dilute as other brands. So they they find it, um, uh, the kombucha taste is more um, concentrated. Yeah, 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 mm-hmm. yeah. So well, comparing to other brands, it's more diluted, and they they think that one they they can accept that better than okay. ours so i must say you know i think i have a very good comeback if people ask you that question just yeah. add water <laughs> <laughs> you want it artificial just add water yo 
<laughs> but what about you? You've you've tasted you've tasted our kombucha. What, how do you find? Um, to be honest, I haven't tried a lot of kombucha, but those mm-hmm. that I've tried are quite, um, I guess, in a way, fringe to my taste. Okay. It's a bit too far off. Um, I guess very experimental and stuff like that. And I like that what you guys do is you bring some familiarity into your drinks, mm. which means that I don't have to go 100% of the way. All I have to go is like 50% of the way is is unknown to me, but 50% of the way is known to me. So it feels more comfortable that way. Oh, okay. Thanks for that. I, I think we understand that entering the market in Malaysia, um, there's really strong brands around and we're definitely not getting a piece of cake if we enter and and sort of face the giants immediately. So I think the way we position ourselves, we have to be very clever about this. And we, we to, to be honest, we're still fine tuning our target market and we're still fine tuning the flavors. And and it's, it's all a process for us, but I think we are just trying to maneuver around and say, why do we have to swim in a fishbowl? We can swim outside of the fishbowl. Mm. That's, okay. that's what we're trying to do, yeah. Okay, so uh, let's, let's, let's dig in a little bit about market leaders and, and who's, you know, who's taking charge and things like that. From where I see, I think is um, that kombucha drinks, the, the established brands are fairly small. And it's scattered around. They are very independent. Uh, micro call them microbreweries, like you know, yeah. nice fancy name, but it's just uh, Nicholas Kitchen. Uh, I'm sure it's slightly bigger, maybe like a you know a small size bigger. But yeah, but but they are fairly small. So to me, where I see is it's still up for grabs, mm-hmm. and everybody is up, um, approaching it from the angle of we are uh, small microbreweries, we're all about, you know, uh, good quality, small batch approach, things like that. Yeah. And there is no one who's actually going like, boom, here's 100,000 units, go sell kind of stuff. Um, and it's everywhere and everybody is buying it and it's the cheapest thing in the world, like five bucks a pop or four bucks a pop, things like that. So there isn't any like that. Um, do you see yourself being in the former, which is the more micro brewery type, more aesthetics type, niche market type, or there is a chance to act for this to actually be something that everybody will pick up and drink in the future? I think we are more towards the latter um, mm-hmm. because we did discuss uh, how we want kombucha to be a replacement for people having sweet drinks most of the time. Because I think Malaysian, in general, have sweet tooth. They don't understand that the drinks that they drink is actually full filled with sugar. So what we yeah. want to do is a small conscious effort. You know, um, once a week, if you could replace your, let's say, your Milo ice with mm. one kombucha, it's a good step towards your own health also. So what we want to do is progressively move hopefully the whole Malaysia to one kombucha a week kind of movement. Let's go bigger lah. Oh, uh, wow. No, let's go for one. <laughs> one, then we can do, I, I can quit my job and be full. <laughs> we can hit the whole of Asia lah. Yeah. yeah. So, so more towards the latter lah. Um, we are looking at maybe, most probably making it bigger. Mm, okay. Mm. But in order to do that, just to, 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 to dig your hit a bit in order to do that your drinks must be competitive with the sugar ones the sugary ones like coke and all that that's like one ringgit two ringgit a pop Mm -hmm. yeah so that's the scale that you need to push yourself down and go wide and and really go horizontal um hopefully it does come with economies of scale uh, but Mm -hmm. going going to one two ringgit uh, competing with them i think it's not that possible Mm. Uh, because I think they are produced in very large batches, like yeah. they have economics of scale at their side. So we don't have that. So, um, but we we do want to tighten the gap. Mm. Mm. Okay. Okay. I think we have actually discussed this before. Um, mm. I sort of, I was like the devil's advocate in the group. I, I told them, I I was I was asking them exactly the same questions. Like if we're competing against sugary drinks, then how are we supposed to beat a uh, one two dollars drink? Like, and. Um, I think Jen Yang and Nicholas both um, managed to convince me that, you know, kombucha has a lot more to offer. It takes two weeks to brew. It's not 
it's not chemically um, formed, you know, um, as, as with other soda drinks. You don't just mix things up and, and there you go, it's processed. Um, it, it takes time for it to ferment and it's, it's sort of like what Jen Young said, uh, it's a good good wine and it takes time for good things to happen. And I think with the, with the price point that we, we are at now, we're, we're looking to fine tune it, um, definitely as, as we scale, but um, we, we're not looking to directly be placing ourselves um, at the price point of a soda drink mm. because it's different from sodas. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Maybe maybe uh, fruit juice, which I think it's a little bit more expensive than sodas, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, fruit juices. So that'll be a bit more like it because yours tastes like fruit anyway. So mm. fruit juice with a little bit of vitagen in there. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it is. Um, you know, technically, um, it has the same component like yogurt drink. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Almost the same. Yeah. And it works the same as all. Yes. Yeah. Right. Uh, let's let's move on to to what's been going on in the past month uh, since the last time we spoke and until now. I know that Chinese New Year kind of um, took away at least two weeks of what's been going on. But is there any updates? Um, we are actually on in process of brewing our fourth flavor. Yay! Mm-hmm. Uh, yay! It's um, <laughs> gonna be launched somewhere March, somewhere March, and yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, do we wanna tell the flavors? Or... No, no, no. Yeah, no, yeah. Okay, okay. okay. No, no, wait. No, the the third one came out right after our first episode, and I thought that was an interesting uh, one. Oh, the next one oh. should be more interesting. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm a big fan of orange. Yeah. Um, dates. Uh, well, maybe. No. Maybe. Yeah. Oh wow! <laughs> yeah, but um, but if the oranges, if the orange taste is you know good enough, then I'm sold. And um, so I assume that that came out because of Chinese New Year. Yes. 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 Is yes. that a limited time flavor? No, we yeah. actually wanted to launch it for a limited time, but then um, mm. that that's my idea lah. But my two partners were like, oh, we are doing this. Uh, why are we wasting so much effort? So we did decide that, oh, we're going to keep it to our core flavor because um, citrus itself is quite well accepted by a lot of people. So, um, mm-hmm. you know, why not we just continue selling it? Yeah. yeah. Um, just just a thought on that one. I mean, um, mm-hmm. where you guys are going with uh, making citrus as a core flavor makes sense. But there is, uh, there is value in creating... Um, limited time kind of flavor as well. It gives mm. a little bit of hype, you know, people yeah. uh, know that it's there. And because it's limited, people feel as if they need to catch it before it disappears. So that's why McDonald's and KFCs, you know, they, they spend a lot on all these limited time uh, uh, products and then they just kill it when the hype is at its max. Because mm-hmm. the purpose they want is just to get people to go there and try them out. Mm-hmm. And at the same time, you know, uh, go and go back to their evergreen products afterwards mm-hmm. as well yeah we, we okay. have discussed this actually and um i think for now um our resources are probably not ready to take on that um short stint of like push mm. yet and and Fair we enough. thought um because we definitely need to be a little more established as, as a brand and we we may need um, a few more other flavors to be the core yeah. Um, before we start on to create a lot more um, interesting ideas. Mm-hmm. Yeah. How many flavors are you guys planning to, let's say, establish out to kind of like a baseline uh, core flavors? Four. The next one should be our last for at least half a year. So okay. after that, we'll most probably focus our effort in um, building the brand, uh, so to speak. Mm. Uh, okay. Okay. We're not very Chinese. We we're, we're okay with four. <laughs> <laughs> no la, We call it three A la. Three A. Three A. Yeah. So far. Yeah. And um, besides the flavoring, has there been any upgrades on the key ingredients in your um brew as well? Um. Yeah, we do. Like um, um. I do experiment with 
uh, I mean, I, we get the feedbacks and, you know, uh, from time to time we'll try to improve. I mean, I will try to improve on the, on the tasting part. So um, what I did recently is that uh, we see a few, few feedback from customers is that they say it's not fizzy enough. Mm. Yeah, so um, what I did is that, I mean, for, I mean, to my understanding on the kombucha is that uh, kombucha, they feed on sugars to create that um, fizziness in the drinks. So what I did was um, after I harvested the kombucha in the bottles, I put a pinch of sugar in it, like mm-hmm. a pinch, and um, I let it continue to ferment for one day before I store it into, into the fridge. So mm-hmm. um, I, did not, I didn't tell Jen Yang and, um, and, <laughs> and Wan Ching at all about this. So I just want to try it and then I let them sell and yeah. I get a feedback because um, I believe that kind of feedback is the most... Um, honest feedback mm. you see so um yeah after that batch um i did that then um i received uh, one thing sent a video of um his his friend um opening up the bottle and it popped like you know the usual uh commercial okay. sales in the market so um yeah from time to time we i mean i will do that <laughs> okay yeah okay but that also if let's say well just just top of my head i'm thinking is that um, there is possibly a conflict between where you want to position yourself and what yeah. you are doing with the customers in a sense that uh, they want sugary drinks, mm-hmm. but you are approaching this as a more healthy option. Mm-hmm. And there, there comes a point where you're, oh, you're battling between what you, do you want to stand firm as who you are and say, no, I want it like this and you have to appreciate it like this. Or <laughs> saying, Okay, fine. You want so you know you want more sugar. I give you more sugar. So, mm. uh, do you think that there is a boundary to that one, or uh, you know, yeah, a limit to it? Because yes. as like a small brand, right? Um, we also sometimes you are more a bit more sensitive to feedback. So when customer A say, "Oh, this is not enough fizz," we also have to evaluate our ourselves whether we want this feedback or not, because not all feedbacks are relevant to the brand. But mm-hmm. I do yeah. understand that, even for myself, right, um, the fizziness in the kombucha does make it fun to drink. And mm-hmm. I think moving towards um, enhancing the fizziness, is, uh, it creates better drinking texture and experience. Uh. So that is the feedback that we like to take. But um, there are some that says, um, what was it the other day? Uh, not enough ginger or... <laughs> Or let's say the citrus is not enough. Uh, that we also have to evaluate ourselves whether this is the flavor profile that we are aiming for or not. So, mm-hmm. okay, yeah. In terms of the sugar, may I add? Um, I think we, to be honest, kombucha don't they don't taste great. Um, if mm-hmm. without the sugar, they basically smell of um, apple cider vinegar. Mm-hmm. And I think as a brand, we have sort of. Um, embrace the fact that uh, for it to taste uh, better it has to be it has to has a certain level of sweetness to it and Mm. we are trying to go for being a health conscious brand but not exactly a healthy healthy um, Mm. health crazed brand because Mm. we understand that um, it takes it takes some time for people to adjust to a certain lifestyle and we want to become a part of that um, and assist people in that um, becoming, making um, more health conscious choices. Mm-hmm. Mm. Okay, fair enough. Because uh, n- n- now that you mentioned about <coughs> apple cider vinegar taste, the first one I tasted, it was a very bad first impression and it was a homemade brew and oh, it tasted like apple cider I thought you were going to say <laughs> <laughs> And I was like, whoa, why is everyone hyping over this drink? It's ugh, bad. And, <laughs> and they have this huge, big tub, right? There's this, I think it's a, I, I, I don't know what is it called. It's a tub or a mason jar or something with the SCOBY inside. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, or, it's called a yeah. SCOBY hotel, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so, so it looks like those science lab where they preserve like you know uh, internal organs. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so it was quite a bad first impression. Then afterwards, I kind of uh, got kind of understand what's the difference between this and that. And and it, mm. it does make sense because you need to enter people into the idea of drinking kombucha first before you jump them into the healthiest mm. version of it. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah. Fair enough. Makes sense. Um, yeah. Uh, let's move on to. Hold on. I think. Is my internet quality good? Yep. Is it really bad? Good. No, it's good. It's good. Okay. Okay. Um, so um, let's move on to what have you done in the past month? Because this is this is quite interesting because every time we run a business or we do something, right, we kind of find easier ways to do something than before. Uh, and I do know that one month is not enough time to, uh, to, to make an assessment. But let's say if in one, in, in the past month, what have you done in the past month that you have done differently than the months before and you wish you would have found out this is the way to do it and it's more efficient, it's better, it's more effective. I guess we can talk about the, um, Chen Yang and uh, Nicholas were trying to optimize the, uh, what, is that a stock count, like sheet, what, what do you oh, call it? Yeah, we were losing, we were losing track of all our stocks, we don't know where is it, um, uh, quite a bad thing to say, but we don't know where is it. We don't know whether we can fulfill this person's order or not. And every time I have to go back home or thank you, mom, I have to ask mom to count <laughs> how many bottles are there in the hey, fridge, you know? Mom, can you go back to your order? Yeah, you know, you know, check how order many bottles right I have. I need to tell the fella, um, yeah. can, we, can, we, can we do your order or not? So, yeah, so we did fine tune that. And sometimes I think initially we start, I, at least I started designing the spreadsheet a bit more complicated. So we decided to simplify it just to keep track of the start. And it has been well since. Mm. Okay. <laughs> um, and just to, just to let you know first, right? Uh, I have spoken to people who run bigger organizations, more mm-hmm. complex ones mm-hmm. with, and they have been doing this for longer and they still have these kind of problems. And it's nice that you guys can figure it out at the smaller scale. So mm-hmm. you can actually duplicate or, or you know modularly scale that thing in the future because yeah. when you're dealing with physical products that is an issue yeah it's it worse is, yeah. especially when you have like multiple storage areas or you know uh, fulfillment centers or whatever you call that mm-hmm. then it becomes a lot more complicated yeah, yeah on top of that i think it's it's a three uh we all have diff- different schedules uh when it comes to work uh, mm-hmm. and and it just complicates things a lot more so we're for the past month, I, I guess we have been stre- trying to streamline this um, back uh, sort of uh, operational um, mm. procedures. Mm. Mm. Yeah, I, I understand that as well. Because sometimes when I work with um, freelancers, right, some of my team are freelancers. Okay. So we need to set like, a, like an additional buffer in deadline so mm-hmm. that because Whenever I send something over, it takes them half a day to get back to me instead of half an hour when I, you know, with my full-time uh, uh, mm-hmm. guy. Mm-hmm. So, so I need to plan, I've stretch everything out. So their deadline, I have a 20% buffer from their deadline to my deadline. So in case if uh-huh. they don't meet their deadline, I still able to meet my deadline. That kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. I, I think but, on the uh, side as well, we, we have been trying to look at, we look at uh, advertising um, algorithms. Um, because we we are trying to fine tune our target market, yet we don't think we have actually achieved yet. Uh, we yeah. we haven't actually achieved uh, reached our audience yet, and mm. we're not we're still trying to fine tune that. And Chen Yang, would, would you wanna? Oh, um, we are now generally focusing on um, ads on Facebook and Instagram, but uh, we do realize that. Um, Facebook, we don't really get that much reach. So we are trying to also push it more to, I think Instagram itself is more like a aesthetically driven place than Facebook. Mm. And Facebook is more like a, you know, when we were younger, that yellow book, that yellow pages where all the businesses are just there. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. So mm. we're trying to push our ads there. And even moving on to Instagram, we're also um, doing a few experiments on, let's say we have this post, um, we would spread it to three different audiences to see how they perform individually to, you know, to just gauge mm. visual A, who reacts to that, visual B, who reacts to that. So we do know how to move on from that. Okay. Okay. So that's, yeah, those are, uh, those are very good in-depth way of doing test and measure. Mm. And I guess from where I come from, because we also manage a bunch of clients who also mm-hmm. advertise in Facebook and Instagram. And, 
I think across the board, right, Instagram is performing better than Facebook. Facebook mm. has reached a point where it's it's so difficult to be effective on Facebook. Yeah. Mm. Well, we, we <laughs> I spoke about live. We spoke about live, Facebook live. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> We are not going to discuss like, this live. <laughs> <laughs> I, my mom watches this, this auntie who sells clothes live. Oh. And I swear she sells a ton of them yeah. every single time she goes live. It's baffling. It's crazy. So many people are watching and they're just buying just like that. Yeah. Exactly. I want this. I want this. Sola, sola, sola. It's like an auction system. <laughs> so good. The auction system is what makes it exciting. Yeah. A lot of people have this like FOMO kind of feel. Yeah, yeah, like, oh, yeah. Shit, yeah. I, don't get it. I also want one, you know? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we, we, we can do it. La. Um, it's, it's not something that we will brush aside, but right now, I don't think it's the right time for us to do uh, Facebook Live because one thing also, um, we, we don't have enough products to do a Facebook Live yet and we don't have the quantity to do Facebook Live also. But we will keep it in the idea bank. Uh. Mm. Okay, actually coming to this slide, let us mm. jump to this thing first because I have been uh, thinking about about how you guys can move forward, uh, what alternative ways you can do this uh, since the last time we spoke. Mm. One method is, of course, the more traditional method is to run advertisements, do Facebook Live and things like that. But another one, I remember we talked about distribution, where you want your product to be. Mm -hmm. And we came from the perspective of actually doing sales. Mm. But there is another angle, which is just purely for brand awareness. Mm -hmm. So let's assume that there are certain channels that you want to go in that you're not making money, but it's fine. At least you're breaking even. Even in the beginning, you lose a little bit. It's okay. Depends on how, how much risk are you willing to go and how aggressive you are, right? So you can actually work on a margin. But if you are able to put yourselves into more prominent places... Mm -hmm. even if people don't buy, it's fine. As mm -hmm. long as people see, as long as they see it there, let's say, for example, right, you can go to the extreme of Jaya Grocer, you put them on the shelf, right? They don't mm -hmm. buy, fine, it doesn't matter. But when they come back and then they see your ad or, or and then they see your post somewhere and then, they, hey, mm -hmm. I've seen these guys before, they are in Jaya Grocer. If they're in Jaya Grocer, that means they are probably, you know, not half bad. I might try mm -hmm. them out. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And there is another company called GoVending.com. Uh, so okay. what they do is they actually own a bunch of vending machines and and brands can consign slots in vending machines. And yeah. this is special because they are focused in fitness centers, fitness first, la, celebrity fitness, la, anytime, uh, this kind of gyms and everything. So they are focused more on healthy lifestyle things. Um, you can... There is a possibility, let's say you can actually book a like you know a slot in it. I there are a few kombucha drinks in there, but it doesn't mean that you can't go in there, lah. You know, it's uh it's just for branding purposes, ma. Maybe you do a consignment, uh, you know, you don't lose if you don't, you know, you don't lose if you don't sell kind of thing. Keep it simple. So that is an alternative way of doing it besides just pushing through on advertisements. Mm. Mm, we really appreciate that. And funny how we were just talking about these ideas, but we haven't quite um Come executed, yeah. Executed in general, we have thought about why we want to be um, not listing on the shelf because mainly, firstly, we don't have the capacity to. But secondly, I think we want to try and create um, brand awareness in in a sense where, when we're attached to a fitness center, for example, it's a certain lifestyle that that uh, people who want certain lifestyle comes and you know we get to interact with these customers. Um, in different ways and this thing on the shelves is, is for us um, it's quite um, it's quite a not it's not not very interactive you kind of just put it on the shelf and no one mm. knows about it unless you, you find out about it yeah and mm. it's a little bit colder you don't have that um, that, that interaction that, yeah the connection with um, the customers mm. Mm. yeah also, also, again, we are not putting anything um, away. It's just right now we are looking at engaging with the customers first and fine-tuning our flavors so that we, um, we understand our customers and our flavors also is what they desire. Then from mm. then, we will consider all these other options to scale upwards. Okay, okay. We have definitely spoken about um, moving on from, from just uh, 
a kombucha brand to something more. Mm-hmm. But of course, um, that's uh, that's in the in the long run. We'll we'll see yeah. how we do <laughs> yeah. about that. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So um. Well, let's let's uh, let's talk about two things. I want to come back to moving on from being a kombucha brand to something else. Mm-hmm. Um, that's part of brand identity, I guess. But the first one is let's talk about the your brew, right? We've been talking about perfecting your brew, um, but we understand that your brew will never be perfect because whenever someone comes in, they will always have something to say everybody's a critic, right? Mm -hmm. They want it this way, they want it that way, and then you choose what to keep and what to let go. And do you see yourself, where do you see yourself in a scale of one to 10 in terms of being able to fully commercialize your product? Like, like, Like one thing that's holding you back, it's not just you because a lot of businesses have this issue. They want to build the perfect product. But we have to also understand that there is no such thing as a perfect product because um, Apple has been improving for the past 12 years and their product is still not perfect. Mm-hmm. Um, and the same can be said about every other brand in the world. Um, and there is also a saying that if you are not ashamed of the product you put out, then it's too late. Uh. Okay. So, so uh, we do understand that um, reaching perfection is the end goal, but you need to your company needs to be sustainable for you to still be able to have interest in it. Because if if you're always stuck in this small scale for a long time, right, you will mm-hmm. sure lose interest. One, you get burned out. You're like, ah, oh, you know what? What's the point of doing this? I'm not moving anywhere. There's no progress. Yeah. And even let's say uh, small batch whiskey makers, like let's say Monkey Shoulder, for example, right? They actually mm-hmm. label their batches. And each time you buy a different batch, the taste is slightly different because they keep making improvements on the subsequent batches that is a bit different from the ones before. So this can be something that you put in as well. So this is batch number, let's say five or batch number six. And then you keep progressing and the taste is a bit different. And people don't like it because it gets better, but they like it because it's a bit different. There's character in there. Mm. It's funny how we, we thought about the idea of um, perfection, perfection being a concept rather than a, than a goal. Um, we, we, we did talk about that when it comes to visual and mm. but in terms of flav- flavoring and tasting, uh, improving our brew, I think it's, a, it's still quite new for us because I think this is quite an exciting time to, to, to start a business for us. Um, like uh, we we are still really fresh. Um, we're, we're looking on to like Facebook Live is com- completely new uh, to any business, and I think um, for for now we would maybe take some time to to get gather a, a bit a bit more feedback, and we will definitely look into re- uh, like uh, what you suggested, um, creating creating maybe a stronger stronger position mm. um, in, in in terms of our. A product. Mm. I think I think in terms of um product uh tasting and the branding itself, we we have a very unique uh I mean very very personalized um branding and a uh, tasting of our product. So it's just that for us to go um to be listed in you know different different places and for us to you know sell it at a bigger scale. Well, I think there are a lot of things that we need to get prepared. I think at least um you know to get the nutrition fact. First, that is the first thing that we, we, we will need to do because in order for us to go to, to sell a bigger scale, we will need that as a you know so-called license for us to, to sell. And secondly, about the taste, like what you have mentioned, um, we do label our our batch by different different number. You know, so um reason why reason why also we adapt that method is um, easier for us to track, you know say touch wood, you know, there's something happened to the to that batch of product. So we know mm. that um, you know, that batch of product, you know, on what what should we do to that batch of product and what are the mistakes that we, you know, potentially found out mm-hmm. from that batch of product. So um yeah, we are still a lot of things that we are still experimenting at the moment. Now. So um, yeah. But but I like Sean's idea on um uh mm proudly announcing that each batch mm. does taste differently 
Mm. So mm. maybe we'll steal that idea for our <laughs> social media. <laughs> it's all yours. Take it. <laughs> it's not yeah, mine anyway. So I, I think I think generally, um, we do want to seek some sort of consistency, but I think um a little bit of differing flavors between dif- between batches does make it a bit more um humane. Like oh, this batch is really created by us, and we are not machines. Um, mm. so long as the flavor is. Um, pleasant to drink. Yeah, mm. you know, it's like it's still, it's still, yeah, handcrafted. <laughs> lemon ginger means lemon ginger. You know, <laughs> because yeah, we're yeah, using yeah. fresh produce, and mm. we cannot actually say um this lemon tastes identical to that lemon that we bought like two weeks ago. So yeah, yeah, exactly. We will, we will, we will use that to our advantage. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Uh, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> No problem, take it. So, <laughs> speaking of which, right, there is something that people appreciate more now um, mm. that there was a time, okay, let's just skip to my experience, okay? I went to Ken's Apothecary uh, during Christmas. Oh, okay. mm-hmm. I want to pick up a candle as a gift, right? And I saw that there was this one brand which the candle holder, this 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 little, uh, uh, what is that called? The, the cup, right? Okay. The glass cup. Each of them is not built identical, and they're mm-hmm. quite ugly one, you know, it's like, it's not level, it's up and down, and things like that. So I asked, like, you know, why, these guys, they're selling 500 bucks for a candle and they got no machine to make it. No, this is handmade. Oh. That's why it's... Oh. See, you spin it as handmade and pe- and all of a sudden I'm like, mm, yes, handmade is good. I want to get one of this. Oh my God, you got sold. <laughs> I was sold. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I understand your, your um, where you're coming from because I think the... the we sort of refer it to as as a wabi sabi um, concept in in design, um, you know, uh, accepting the imperfections of of things of design. But I think it's sort of um, a bit used too loosely because mm. that sort of becomes the excuse where we accept things that are not done to a certain quality. Yeah, and, yeah. And it's it's sort of one thing that we 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 have to. We have to sort of um, tackle, yeah. address, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Note to Sean. Note to self. Don't buy uneven. No. <laughs> no. 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 Not to self. Just because they say it's handmade so... doesn't mean it's good. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay. Let's um uh let's let's circle back to what uh, Nicholas said. Uh, it's it could be something that you guys are familiar with, but I think I'll read uh, our listeners and probably I'm not familiar with this. Is the nutritional facts. Right. Uh, how do you? What's the process of obtaining nutritional facts? And you spoke of a license that you need to get for this. Um, you will need to send to the lab, and they will do all the jobs there. And at the end of the day, you know, it could took up probably months, or weeks, um, for them to come up with that with that nutritional fact. And with that, um, it is a license, so called a license for us to to be able to list it, you know, in a in a in a grocers and groceries and you know, or we can sell it at a bigger scale. Yeah. And it's it's a requirement, right, for all um consumables to have nutritional facts? Yes. yes. At, no, at least if you list it in um those retailers, the big retailers, mm-hmm. you need to have them. But if you are selling it as a, a small business, um it's not required. Mm-hmm. Okay, like a homemade don't, don't, don't kind of thing. Don't quote me on that. Uh, I don't want to kill. <laughs> <laughs> it it makes sense to yeah. me at least. <laughs> <laughs> and so so essentially, there are those commentarian something right that actually yeah, does there, this. There are few, there are few um uh, labs that are doing all this um uh, report right where mm-hmm. um they are licensed um and they are authorized by the government trend so mm-hmm. whenever license they give give out um it is legit so okay. yeah you can use that and each time you create a new batch with a little bit of difference oh. you need to send it out again no 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 um it's for the whole product so if your product name is let's say lemon ginger so you only need to do one and oh. um that's it for the whole thing Oh, okay. Because okay. um, there's a margin for you to move around, uh, mm. a very tiny margin for you to move around. Mm. Okay. Okay. Fair enough. <laughs> um, yes. Just now we did talk about uh, potentially not wanting to just uh, sell kombucha, right? Um, mm. Then let's circle back to that one, and then we talk mm. about your company positioning. Um. So I do have an idea because 
if you do not just want to sell kombucha, the next question is, what do you want to sell that complements not kombucha, but your brand image? Because once you can figure that out, that is your brand image. That is what you want to be. For example, you want to position kombucha as a healthy drink. So healthy is a, is a brand image. And if your other, if your other products can also complement the brand image of healthy, then your brand image can be that you are concerned and you're obsessed with health and all the products that come out are healthy. So then your position is like, you know, we are, I guess, um, the healthy version of fruit, fruit juice or this kind of stuff, like, you know, fruit juice, but healthier mm-hmm. kind of stuff. Yeah. Um, I think for the brand, right, uh, at least through my experience, um, we are not necessarily creating health health products we are creating more of like a healthier alternative it has, if that makes sense la. so mm. not not all product has to be um zero sugar zero sodium you know those kind what we want to do is create this sustainable movement movement let's not call it movement sustainable practice yeah. um so everyone can do it consistently because you don't want to have like this short sprint where you have this diet for a month and then after that you just fall off and you, you go back to your old methods. What we want to do is sustainable. Um, you enjoy the process. We enjoy making it. Mm. That's that's the general brand image. Though. Because for okay. me, I've gone on multiple diets and none of them actually works until I actually do things or eat things or do work out that I actually enjoy. You know, it's, mm. it's something that is more, sus- you want to make it a lifestyle instead of a short sprint. Mm. Okay. So something along the tag lines of maybe um, life is a marathon, so should you die it. <laughs> something, something like that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, no, I totally agree with you because I know a lot of people who like go on like really hardcore diets and two weeks later they fall off the bandwagon. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Because mm. it's so difficult, right? It's such a shock to their body and their their mind. Yeah. 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 Okay, so, fair enough. Coming back to like maybe attaching to gyms, um, we have thought about um, maybe going into health conscious uh, food, mm. um, not 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 just drinks, um, and sort of maybe we we were just bench like having a bad like mm. uh, having a chat um, yeah. last weekend, just talking about. I was questioning them, uh, what if what if we start off a canteen like. Uh, so, uh, you know, that's attached to gym because people always say 80% diet, 20% workout. But why, why isn't anyone, why isn't the canteen, why isn't a canteen, a healthy canteen attached to a gym, you know, where it's eight times the size of a, a gym or something like that. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I, I was just questioning it and we were just talking about this and, and it's such a coincidence that you, you brought it up today. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's well, a thing. Um, it, yeah, I'm sorry. Can, can I add Go ahead, Nicholas. Uh, Go yeah, ahead. so I think from time to time, um, some change is necessary to the brand. Uh, a very good example recently that I read about news is that uh, Damakan, Damakan, do you know the brand Damakan? Yeah. They yeah. recently have shifted from healthy food to a more, um, you know, a market acceptable food. Malaysian, Malaysian flavors. Food and you know it's more fun, fun, uh, kind of food that the Malaysian is looking for. So um, why their their founders um why they when they're answering all these questions they were saying that you know it's not because um they cannot capture the market or you know the market cannot be sustained the healthier market cannot be sustained. So the reason being the change is that um they want to capture a bigger bigger market per se because. Um, you imagine like for us, you know, we also were selling kombucha for like, you know, after a decade. So what's next? You know, th- there is definitely that we will be, you know, moving away from it and create something, you know, along the brand that is um, offering to the market, to, 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 a, to a different market. Mm. Mm. Okay. That's a, that's a... Sorry, go for it. No, go ahead, go ahead. U- ultimately, we want to... We want to make the brand a bit more holistic as mm. we want to be able to offer something more holistic to the customers. Yeah, mm. That's a good uh, um, goal. Like, let's say if you look at maybe three years, five years down the road, 
Mm. Um, that is something that you can transform into, uh, which is which is good to have. Like you know, you know where you want to go, where's the trajectory, where you want to launch into. Uh, but also remember that from the very beginning, you need to build a solid MVP, and that mm. MVP needs to be the one that can actually sustain itself before you move on to something else. Yeah, um, yeah. we tend to like to look far and dream a bit but uh, at the end of the day we also want to be uh what is that called um down on the ground yeah very realistic on, on yeah. where we are mm-hmm. taking one step ahead and the other mm-hmm. um so let's let's move on to the final final topic of today uh i know uh Jen Yang, that we did say that this was supposed to be a bit more of a conversational thing but yeah <laughs> I'm still very new at this, so no worries, no worries. I hope that one day our conversations can be a bit more um, conversational than me asking all the questions and you guys answering the questions. Um, mm-hmm. But let's take it a step at a time, lah. Huh? <laughs> uh, <Really okay>. <laughs> <laughs> so um, the final quest, the final topic is that um, we want to talk about the plan to move one partner at a time to a full time capacity. Uh, so then it comes down to the volume, the dollars and cents, uh, um, how much it needs for to bring that person in, not to compete with the the income that they are getting right now, but enough to sustain first so that that full-time person can run at three times the speed of the other two and then bring in a second and then bring in a third. Mm-hmm. Uh, do you have this in your projection? I think we're just casually talking about it. There's, um, at the rate that we are selling, um, I don't think it's realistic to actually ask anyone to commit to this full-time because it will definitely affect mm-hmm. that person's um, well-being, um, financial yeah. well-being, and we don't want to put anyone through that kind of situation. Um, mm-hmm. And anyone being put in that situation would, slowly lose interest in actually doing the business one and producing the product too. So we don't want to have this kind of burnout. But ultimately, yeah, that's at least I feel like I want to be in this full time. Yeah. 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 So we are also building it. Like us say um, the first thing now, I mean, soon we will be doing is that to increase our production capacity <laughs> where we wish to sell more, you know, yeah. <laughs> if we are able to, you know, increase the capacity, that means we are able to sell more. So, mm-hmm. yeah, we will start doing that first, um, you know, for yeah. us to grow bigger and go further. Yeah. So at this point, do you have like uh, more demand than you can supply? It's it's more than we expected. Um, mm-hmm. We have returning customers, which is good. We want returning customers. Uh, yeah. We don't want our friends to just support us and, you know, they don't like the product. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. um yeah, it's definitely more than uh what we expected, but of course, you know, uh, we are increasing our production also to cater for potentially more demand because recently we haven't <laughs> been able to keep a healthy stock Stop balance level. in our fridge. So every time there's a new order we'll be like scrambling, oh do we have this? Do we have this? Yeah, we do want that. So that's why we are expanding our production a little bit more. Which is good. I yeah, think, it's a good problem think, to have. I think it's I yeah, it's a good problem to have. Yeah. <laughs> It is. So soon you got to like, you know, get another kitchen somewhere, you know, brew your stuff. Yeah, and somewhere we'll keep it the secret. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, so let's, okay. Um, I just want to, to share a little bit of where I, because I was in the same position as you guys are right now. Um, when we started our firm, it was uh, three of us have different jobs and I can say that um, although it was because I was the first one who got in full time, mm. so I had to let go of a lot of my comforts, uh, you know, cars and all that kind of stuff, just throw them all out, minimize my my expenses and just to survive for, for maybe two to three years, rough it out until it bounced up again. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I can say that personally, as the first person in, uh, although it was very tough in the beginning, I think it was a good way to push forward uh, at a scale that I would not have been able to if I still have a full-time job. Mm. It's it's the not to say that you're throwing yourself out of the plane and then trying to build another plane as you as you're going down to the ground before you die, but there is some safety, but it's very minimal. 
Mm. And while I have my full attention to work in just one project, right, I'm able to go much further than if I'm just doing it at night. So that is my feedback on that one. Lah. Mm. Mm-hmm. It also, um, we are, well, to be honest, we were still a little bit far away from, you know, what we can commit to as a full time. So mm. for, 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 for the um, sales of revenue that we have been starting all the time. So um, we are hoping to reach to a level that, you know, maybe one of us will get to work full time for the brand mm. and um, slowly we'll be doing that up. Mm. Mm. Yeah. It's a very it's, chicken and egg kind of situation, right? Like yeah, this. it is, right? Mm. Yeah, very chicken and egg kind of situation. Mm. So um, the faster way people will use is like, oh, you know, let's just get funding and then push forward. But... <laughs> Funding is difficult because you are using artificially injected money. Mm-hmm. That means your business is not sustainable, right? Mm-hmm, yeah. So you need to prove that your business is sustainable first, and then you are more confident at you know getting fund injection. Yeah. And in order to do that, we talk about numbers really, right? If let's say minimum for a month, you need to be able to sell let's say ten thousand units, right? Mm-hmm. So that you can pay for someone, pay for operations, and have twenty percent extra to roll up to next month's cash flow. Mm. And then the next month onwards, let's go to maybe 12,000, 14,000, 15,000. Then you look at where you're going to get that number from. Who can give it to you? Um, from one side, you can say, I want to sell to like just a few people. And mm. But the tough part about that is it's three, three, three of you going one by one. But if you, uh, let's say we did, you did talk about finding <clears throat> stockists that can take like maybe a thousand at a time, two thousand at a time. Then, you know, then the, ball game is different then you find that you can scale and then you're more confident in building or, or looking for the kitchen and hiring one or two people to actually focus on brewing and getting the capacity up you know and the uh, volume up and everything so you feel as if uh that you're more confident okay you know what there is a demand now i can put this and i know that i can sell hmm. definitely moving to that but yeah <laughs> we're, we're still a bit more you know unsure whether to jump onto it right now or not. Mm. It, um, we're, we're probably going to give it a year, um, a year to see its potential and we will decide then. Probably mm. it will be me or Nicholas. <laughs> <laughs> the... Why does this sound like a bad thing, Jenya? Why? No, it's not. It's no. Like, I'm going to put myself up this pedestal also like, oh, I'm all you know, I, I'm sending myself to to that. But yeah, I, I'm more than willing to, so long as it's um, sustainable. I, I'm okay for going a new car, you know, all those material mm. stuff for this. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Um, when when I, when the three of us in, in my company made the decision, it was easy because uh, one of us have two kids, another one was getting married, and I was the only one who says, yeah, I've got nothing. <laughs> <laughs> put me in there. <laughs> that, that sounds sad. that. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, you know, in a way, like uh, uh, two of them cannot, especially the one with two kids, right? So he's yeah. got twins, and he will not jump in first. Yeah. So yeah, and um, I guess it's a, it's a bit of a leap, and uh, definitely, Jian Yang, when you feel more ready to do this. Uh, mm-hmm. And you guys will know when it's time, and you're ready to take the leap to the next uh, yeah. next level. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, things are not just you know from us only. You know, um, the market, the the, the demand need to be ready as well. Because, um, what I see is that kombucha is not a very you know popularly popularly accepted by the market. You know, mm-hmm. when, when there are some people even when you tell them kombucha, they will, they'll be like, huh, what is that? It, you know, um, mm-hmm. not just us selling how many bottles are, but also people that they need to have this kind of demand then we can sell more you know it's mm-hmm. like a, everything combined into one so mm-hmm. yeah do you guys see yourselves as um potentially educators of the industry or you want to wait for someone like have someone else do it and then you go in and um take advantage of the budding market no we're ready to go out there with our aprons you know we're ready to be walking down the streets Telling just everyone the about the goodness. Just uh, yeah. 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 <laughs> just, just aprons. <laughs> no, not just. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> cut that shot. Cut it off. Cut it off. <laughs> not appropriate for Malaysian market. <laughs> yeah. 
Um, yeah. I think we want to be educators, or at least we are looking at being educators. Um, but there's also a thing that we, or at least I would remind all of us to be cautious about, that is entering a market. You know, going <coughs> full force when it's premature. We want to mm. be able to ride um, that trend upwards and not not waste too much resources on when it's you know plat- not plateauing like, like just starting off. So we don't mm. want to enter it prematurely. So essentially, what you're doing is um, to quote every um, surfer, you're sitting in the sea and you're waiting for the wave to come. Yeah, to and then we're gonna ride the wave up. Yeah, you're gonna ride. <laughs> yeah, we're gonna do that. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> because you're paddling to shore by yourself and there's no waves, so it's very tiring and using a lot of resources. Yes. And if yes. you're not there right now, you may not be able to catch the wave. Mm-hmm. So you're just there waiting for the wave to, yes. to arrive. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Fair enough. Good. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Love the analogy. Yeah. Surfing analogy. <laughs> Okay, uh, thank you very much, guys, for thank participating you. in this. Thank, thank you for joining you. us. And um, Nicholas, Jen Yang, and Wan Ching. And Wan Ching is still in the office, right? Just finished work, and he... Yeah. Mm-hmm. The hardest worker among us. us. Right. No, no sarcasm, like, really hardest worker among us. <laughs> the hardest working, yeah. Well, Wan Ching is an architect. All architects are very hardworking. Yeah. Yeah, because we don't have a choice. Oh no! Oh. <laughs> that is another topic that will be on another podcast. <laughs> Let me start another podcast to talk yeah. about this, huh? <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> okay, um, so before we leave today's very awesome episode, can uh, maybe you tell the listeners where we can find out more about you, your products, and where we can buy from you? Oh, um, follow us on Hey Scooby Boo. Oh, I need to practice this. Follow us on Hey Scooby Boo, Hey dot Scooby Boo. Um, you can buy it. Uh, just slide us a DM or WhatsApp business. Okay. Uh, on Instagram, Facebook, yep. Instagram, Facebook. We're on these two pla- and WhatsApp. And WhatsApp. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. So you guys, uh, if you want to try it out, they have. I'm gonna go try out the. Okay. I know just now when you said that. Um, these We're friends gonna send you four. get the first one who did not order the next one. No, I don't want you to send it to me. I want to buy from you guys. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna send you I felt four bad just now, like you know. Drink <laughs> I, I drank the first three and they were awesome. Oh. <laughs> okay, um, so no problem. Thank you very much. Um, so that's all for this week's episode of Building a Business Podcast. Next week we will interview Eddie from December first Floris. Uh, to find out what's been going on with him for the past month. And uh, oh, that's all for our podcast this week. Our podcast is available on Anchor FM, Google Podcasts, Breaker, and Spotify. Our full versions are available on YouTube. And I post bits and clips on Instagram, and Instagram, Facebook, and LinkedIn. Thank you very much, Nicholas, Wan Ching, and Jen Yang. Thank you. Yeah. All right, thank you. We'll see you next month. Thank you so much, John, for having us. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Wow. I have one more percent left in my iPad. I was like, you know, <laughs> right now.